So, continuing from previous lecture on the topic of precision farming and protected cultivation and simulation application in agriculture and natural resource management, we will discuss today another you know aspect of hydroponic system that we had been discussing since the last lecture. So, as I said that in the previous lecture that uh, you know under protected cultivation or precision farming, these are the new system of uh, cultivation which are getting lot of popularity. But please note that, that this kind of system where it is you know almost soil less agriculture system that means it is away from the natural system of agriculture. There is always a concern of cost associated with it. So, it is the challenge for, for all of us to invent or to modify the existing technology in such a way that we can reduce the cost of this particular system. Because as technically these systems are quite efficient and certainly would help our resource poor farmer. Now, if you see that this particular hydroponic system here. So, you have actually this particular system with hydroponic system along with drip irrigation. Now, I am sure that you can recall that one of our previous lectures we discussed about drip irrigation in great detail. So, how now drip irrigation can also be integrated with hydroponic system? This particular schematic diagram actually demonstrate that. So, you have a system which we call grow tray or hydroponic tube where you have this kind of small small pot along with the plant and then you have the growth media inside this. Okay. So, these uh, things we have discussed in previous lecture. Now, what is the difference or addition with this system is the drip irrigation system. So, this is an extra addition to that. Now, here we have the water tank, you have a water tank right and then this water can also be mixed with uh, nutrient solution and then you can have a air bubbling system here to diffuse the air into the water system like you might have seen in aquarium in our houses. So, you have a water pump here. So, this water pump will help to pump the water into this pipe. Now, this pipe will have a small small outlet which we have discussed in previous classes how drop by drop you know through this kind of system water can be actually given to the plant right at the point where they require it. So, this drop by drop water can be put inside this uh, container a uh, growth medium carrying this plant. So, that exactly that amount of water you give to the plant which is required for them to grow. So, here you are bringing two type of precision agriculture or farming system. One is drip irrigation at the same time you are also bringing hydroponic system which also comes under protected farming system. Now, yes this is a very efficient system and you can see that how we can avoid the excessive use of water. When water is a commodity that I think we cannot afford to lose any further. So, maximization of water uses is going to be the deciding factor in coming days. Now, there are few you know disadvantages also associated with this. One is that the drip lines sometime as I discussed in previous lecture these tubes uh, sometime can get actually clogged and then if you are not monitoring it. See I mentioned in previous lectures also that these kind of advanced technology which are highly efficient in utilizing natural resources like water. So, they demand actually regular monitoring. So, if you monitor it then they will serve you for long time without any problem. Little bit of maintenance can also avoid you know large expenditure of repairing or maintaining the system. So, this type of pipe sometime as I said that can get clogging and because of that if you are not monitoring it on regular interval these plants will not get the required water. Remember in drip irrigation 
we are giving drop by drop water. So, that means in the media there will not be any excess moisture for the plant. So, if it stops for some time then certainly uh, plant will suffer out of water Th that is an issue. Now, synthetic nutrients which actually we put in this uh, water synthetic nutrients are the logical choice for this kind of system. The reason is that organic materials can actually clog this kind of pipeline much faster. So, instead of that you can put a uh, nutrient synthetic nutrient in the water and in solution form it can go along with the water and then drop by drop get actually inside the media. Then instead of the reservoir simple tap water can be used in this kind of system and this drip pipeline can pass through the hydroponic tube also. Now, if your water tank or supply of water into this reservoir is not very regular or suppose that there is a problem with you know manpower to regularly monitor this water flowing into the tank whatever reason. So, instead of that this kind of reservoir or tank simply with the supply water also you can connect, but in that case you have to also find out that how this uh, nutrient solution you can able to supply to the media or to the plants. Apart from that hydroponic system can also be used with stagnant water ok. It means after rainfall suppose in some places you have some uh, stagnant water. So, that water also can be uh, utilized for drip irrigation or hydroponic system. So, this is the one that I was talking about this is your water supply line suppose at your home or any place where you are growing plant. So, you have a tap here this is the pipeline this is the reservoir. So, from this the water will come into the reservoir you can mix uh, the uh, nutrient solution as shown here and this is the valve this you can regulate to go the water from the reservoir into this water nutrient solution tank. So, your supply from the main line can come into the reservoir, but if you do not have it for some reason you can straight away connect it to this water nutrient solution tank also. From there then the rest of the thing is like this particular schematic diagram. So, as I said that that this kind of hydroponic system along with integrated with drip irrigation system can also be tried and in that case you can also minimize the uses of water right. But there is also option that if you have stagnant water in some places then you can actually use also this kind of system quite efficiently, but remember that you need to be careful about the dirt or especially the dissolved solid into that stagnated water because if there are too much of dissolved solid in that or the contains lot of you know material uh, from outside then though they can actually close your this pipeline. So, this pipeline if get closed then water will not come to the plant as I already discussed. Otherwise this system is quite efficient system and this is an option for future also we have, but again I repeat the challenge is cost how to minimize that and there what we need technology innovation. So, all of us actually need to work more on that because certain systems are already available. Well, many of you might have heard or knowing about vertical farming this is getting lot of popularity across the world especially countries like Singapore, Canada, Australia, USA. So, they are very much into this farming because they have also very tall building for their residential and official purposes. So, this kind of building they actually try to uh, use the spaces for farming and in India also you will see that some of the airports, some of the big corporate offices including some of the institute. In fact, here at IIT Guwahati we also started uh, this initiative in a small way 
uh, you know somewhere inside the campus in one of the buildings. But the thing is that as I said hydroponics, vertical farming, this futuristic all farming technology require very frequent monitoring. They may not require you know regular maintenance, but the monitoring because if you monitor a little bit of cleaning or supply land check, then it can actually work for long without any major expenditure involved. Now, vertical farming it is a practice of growing crops in vertical stack layers. So, you can have actually this type of vertical layers or you can have also you know this kind of triangular shape vertically going up and or slantly going up. So, various kind of design as I said that in some of the airports if you pass through you will be able to see that. This vertical farming basically the concept came from because increasingly across the world we are losing the land, we are losing you know valuable lands to other purposes for other uses. So, I do not want to get into those and debate whether those uses are more important than growing plants or not, but yes everything that we need you know we have to somehow manage uh, among all the available resources that we have. But certainly land and water these two natural resources are very 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 critical to our survival and they are increasingly going down and down as far as their availability is concerned. So, vertical farming you will find that this technology often incorporates control environment agriculture. In a sense unlike natural ecosystem or natural farming system that you see outside in the field they are not like that. They actually try to optimize the plant growth and largely encouraging soil less farming techniques. Okay. As I said in the previous class this soil less culture of plant is getting increasingly popular because we are losing actually land and soil for, for various other activity as a part of our overall growth and, and development. It is an also alternative farming uh, system which can be used for even small scale productions of vegetables or flowers utilizing the building spaces or in some spaces even within an office complex. So, the concept is that utilizing the spaces within the buildings even within the constructions. So, that you optimize every bit of space and you grow this kind of plant so that you can also earn some money or overall that you know some concept is coming also that within the complex of a company in their building they are growing certain you know green crops, salads and all those things and they are utilizing using it for their own consumption within their office premises. So, that kind of culture is also coming up and it is pretty new in our system, but this works nicely. You would see that presently a vertical farming is also used in large scale productions largely in the developed country okay, where you can actually utilize a significantly large area you know space or constructions areas where you can utilize for a relatively higher number of plants. Vertical farming can be done by the application of soil less cultivation in small plastics like you see that these are the bottles, plastic bottles which uh, is after drinking we throw it instead of making generating plastic waste you can actually recycle it for vertical farming. So, this kind of example you will see at individual level at household level in many parts of our country these days. So, small plastic bottles uh, with uh, cost effective small scale pipe based irrigation system can also be done. And there are also some uh, places where people are trying small bottles for supplying the water in this vertical system through some small pipes. So, literally those bottle actually help them kind of a indirect manner of drip irrigation. So, these are the pipes and this is suppose your bottle and suppose this is the bottle mouth. So, the water will come here and go here and then drop by drop will 
you know come into the pot or carry the carrier having the plant and here also you can uh, basically have another pipe if you want to make continuous so then this part you have to also uh, make a hole here so the excess water from here will pass through straight away to another bottle so in this manner you can have you know a continuous system of utilizing small bottles for having drip irrigation into the vertical farming system then portable solar pumps also some cases people used efficiently for this you know solar power irrigation system so they use the pump to pump the water from suppose from somewhere some small tank inside the building utilizing the solar energy and uh, sometime they can also go for rooftop uh, gardening uh, through hydroponic system which is very popular in some parts of our country like bangalore i have seen that and maybe some other places like bombay delhi you can also have so ideally vertical farming is a concept as i said that that it allows you to use your construction places or spaces or building spaces because if you can't grow it if you don't get you know um, the land aptopium amount of land to grow at least in small scale for your individual consumption you can grow certain uh, vegetables you know salads those things inside this kind of building space so vertical farming is getting really popular these days this can be applied uh, as a part of indoor garden or kitchen garden as i just now said and then how actually you can do it so sometime fluorescent light also can be used as an alternative for solar light so fluorescent uh, grow light actually can be used for going herbs or vegetables indoors again i just say that if you start with your own individual uses for a one small family then if every family start using that then there will be a kind of a culture of having farming inside your building space so fluorescent uh, grow light also are of two types which includes the fluorescent tubes and compact fluorescent light we call it cfls which most of you know fluorescent tube can come in many different intensity and that we need to choose very carefully for the kind of plant that you are going to grow in that system so largely this kind of uh, lights they don't emit excess heat and thus allow the farmers to keep the light very close to the plant and this low heat emitting system on lights also allow you to save energy so see the concept of this kind of advanced farming system is you know it is taking care of your energy soil land water overall if you look at the you know sdgs the sustainable development goals that they this kind of you know, futuristic farming technology very well actually attempts to address those kind of sdgs that you know, the world has set for us to achieve the next type of light source can be high pressure sodium hps grow lights hps lights have become very popular and slowly slowly they are overtaking the uses of fluorescent tubes or bulbs and these uh, hpss are more common among commercial and ex indoor growers like you know contract farming or uh, some large you know online vegetable delivery company so these are new new business ideas when they are coming so you will see that this kind of technology will get much more popularity hps also produce a considerable amount of heat unlike cfl so it requires also a significant amount of investment to set up and maintain so that's why you know hpss is not uh, recommended for resource poor farmers especially in our indian condition at least as of uh, uh, today so cfl still looks like a option that in our system we can go ahead continue with vertical farming next is led grow light this is also very popular some of you might have seen this kind of structure as i was mentioning that within a office uh, space or 
airport or many other big building area, uh, this kind of things you might see in some of our uh, airports. So, this technique has come first around 1900 and the red and blue LED is uh, actually the perfect system for you know farming for indoor farming and being used almost for last uh, 20, 20 to 5 years. Most of the energy efficient uh, lighting system you will find they are actually LED. So, our office spaces and many other places LEDs are these days being recommended more than any other form of light sources. These sources LED light sources can also be replaced uh, and they can be put easily far away from the you know uh, the plants while still producing enough light without consuming much energy. So, that is one positive aspect of LED that is why LED is getting much more popularity. CFL are almost 50 percent less efficient than LED grow light. So, this is a most important criteria why LED is getting important in this kind of system or otherwise also. The heat production by LED grow light is almost near 0. Okay. So, that is another very positive aspect because you know these days the green building, green farming this concept means with minimum uses of natural resources you maximize your production that is the uh, motto of today's. So, LED platforms based uh, you know to create a uh, relatively conducive indoor environment for any kind of food or any other purposes. If you want to go for suppose uh, salads and other things which you directly want to consume you will see that vertical farming is one of the uh, very popular way that people are going for those kind of products. The cost of LED light bulbs of course, is higher than the other two types and also workers who are working in indoor farms, they need to use you know eye protection because LED is harmful to human eyes. There are some report on that. So, directly looking at LEDs uh, from a very close distance is not uh, always recommended. So, especially for people who are working uh, inside this kind of light sources just need to be a little bit careful with their uh, eye protection. That is one only one precaution for vertical farming. Now, let us talk about another interesting aspect and that is uh, automated irrigation system. We have been talking about uh, various kind of irrigation system and we talked about in great detail you know drip irrigation, sprinkler etcetera. Now, today we are in the age of AI ML, artificial intelligence, machine language, IOT, various kind of technology. Irrigation is one of the system where most of the technologists from this field AI ML or IOT are very interested to contribute in the field of irrigation system. So, that is why now I will be discussing little bit about this automated irrigation system, how they work, what are the basic principles etcetera. So, when do we come to know that we need to irrigate? Means, when the soil goes below field capacity, means there is a amount an amount of water or moisture, the minimum amount that is required for a plant to survive. If it goes below that amount, which you can actually measure and experienced people can even feel touching the soil you need to irrigate. Now, in most of the cases in natural you know uh, farming system in special in our condition our farmers are so much of experience. So, they can even looking at or touching the soil can understand that this is the time to irrigate. There are also some uh, system or indicators people use for irrigation looking at the plant physiology and also growth stage wise irrigation recommended like a plant suppose a 90 days its life cycle. So, in that case here particularly at what stages that you must give irrigation. So, plant growth stage based irrigation also can be recommended, but look at here now in this particular you know schematic diagram how automated irrigation system can help us for irrigating 
our field or also suppose culture media in hydroponic system. So, in soil suppose you have a sensor soil moisture sen sensor which when the moisture goes down below the critical level it will give an kind of a indication or indicator through a light or alarm. Then actually what happen is that here is the system as you see that you will have a Arduino board here the system which actually allows you to integrate the sensor the indicator and also decision uh, system for starting the pump so that the water can be irrigated in the particular site where it is required. So, this is uh, suppose the soil sensor which you can actually put inside the soil from here it will sense and the data will go here and then this uh, information will uh, reach uh, through jumper wire into the Adriano board and from there then it will also generate a signal and that signal or indicator actually will be kind of a alarm for you know the farmers or a particular person. So, there could be two way one that if the alarm is seen then one person can put on the switch of the motor or the pump or the other way if you want to make it fully automatic as the system shows that once the sensor gives you the data that water is less this is the time to give moisture then this information actually will go into the board and then will come back into the you know NPN system from here the information will go into the DC motor and automatically the motor will be put on and then water will be pumped and it will be supplied in the place where it is required. Now, this kind of automated irrigation system used largely for small scale indoor garden or kitchen garden or rooftop garden um, at the field level of course, uh, you know at as of today in our condition still it is a kind of a dream. But yes, lot of people including our institute IIT Guwahati also a team is working to develop some kind of automatic system where uh, regulation or prediction of you know uh, soil moisture irrigation can be carried out, timely application of water also can be achieved. So, this kind of system if it comes in it also uh, reduces labor as well as reduces the chance of infection through the contact surfaces. So, only where you actually do not have enough manpower and where you actually want to do it in a very small scale as of today this kind of system actually can be tried. This uh, system can be fabricated by using either a simple timer to operate the control valve uh, for irrigation for scheduling irrigation for example, say daily interval that you decide that 10 o'clock in morning and then I will have another irrigation say around 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So, you can actually do in that manner as well and as I said that uh, do you know raspberry pi this kind of uh, system can help you to carry out this kind of exercise. Improved system can be used with the help of any soil moisture sensors uh, which are commercially available and they are largely you know capacity type of sensor. These are associated with uh, certain microcontroller which will finally operate the valve as you saw in this picture and once the valve operation is taken care of your irrigation or water supply to the plants will also be taken care of. For soil less media as we discussed just in, in the previous slide like in hydroponics soil less media you know the commercially you do not get that kind of sensors, but uh, sometime you know some some there are some reports uh, that we find that in some of the developed countries are also trying this kind of sensor to develop and apply it for also soil less uh, media. Now, wireless sensor network uh, by the help of IoT you know all Android applications also people are working on lot of research is taking place as I mentioned 
here at IIT Guwahati also uh, a team is working towards this kind of application. Now, this particular side is actually shows the different kind of sensors which can be used for agricultural farming systems applications and specially water applications. Now, if you see the different environmental parameters which are important for a plant growth, for those kind of parameters sensors are actually developed. Now, what are the things that we need? Temperature, one of the most important parameter, humidity and these two parameter can easily be uh, sensed through some sensor. Now, internal air temperature suppose within a building space if you are going for suppose a vertical farming. So, in that case what is the internal temperature? The latent heat of vaporization, accumulated degree days, uh, then your air density, then slope of the saturation vapor pressure, saturation vapor pressure, actual vapor pressure, all these information are actually these are various kind of indicator or uh, sensors that actually help you to study the plant growth. Now, few other aspect are also important for say transpiration crop coefficient is also an another important apart from the other parameter. Now, crop transpiration can lead to accumulated crop transpiration which actually can basically uh, have some linkage with the sensing the moisture amount in the soil or in the other media where you are going the plant. Now, in case of other uh, sensors or indicators that we have here, long wave radiation, net short wave radiation, they also play important role. So, from these other sensors, we can actually come down to you know some specific heat of the ambient air, because those are the parameters which regulate again your evapotranspiration E T. Evapotranspiration is a phenomena which actually associated with removal of water from the plant canopy into the environment. Of course, uh, if you recall in uh, previous lecture, I mentioned about the system called SPAC. So, you know under the influence of pressure changes, pressure you know low pressure or high pressure situation either uh, you know in case of low pressure if, if the humidity moisture is already there into the environment ambient environment certainly uh, the plants will find difficulty to transpire it into the uh, environment. But if it is high pressure where outside uh, environment is dry very less humidity then definitely the plant canopy will be able to transpire the water pretty much easily into the surrounding environment. So, in a sense that these are the heating uh, parameters or radiations etcetera, they actually regulate your evapotranspiration and evapotranspiration is if regulated then they can actually ultimately decides that when the uh, soil will be dry and then you need the irrigation for those plants. Now, all these things can be optimized as well. And as I said in the previous this slide that to make this kind of automatic system, it takes lot of innovations and also uh, studies to, to mimic the conditions of the natural system. But research and innovations are going on in this uh, line for, for many, many years. Well, these are some of the components uh, that are being used uh, for making automized farming system and it has become a very, very popular you know line area of research and interdisciplinary research between artificial intelligence experts and agricultural experts working together towards you know application of this advanced technologies for development of efficient agriculture. Uh, so, IoT components like sensors, actuators, microcontrollers, then uh, for connectivity we need LAN, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. Service platform, you know we can need different kind of dashboard monitoring, 
So, the good thing is that most of these instruments are available in the market. So, this is the soil moisture sensors often you know people use for this kind of activity. So, essentially the situation is that we have now in uh, reached a state where this kind of you know advanced technologies must be try attempted to apply in the field of agriculture where natural resources required insignificant amount. So, to maximize or enhance the efficiency of natural resources like water, land etcetera, I think that this advanced technology also could play a very, very important role in the days to come. Well, IoT, you have been listening about the application of IoT in various field. So, in natural resource management also they are playing a quite a significant role. Now, these are different kind of layers in case of IoT you will find. So, cloud uh, layer of course, is computation when you need big data and application of huge amount of data then you can go for cloud layer and as you see that every you know layer or system has a certain uh, restrictions, a certain what you call domain that in that within that they can be applied. Essentially, uh, very soon in near future somehow I sense that we are going to see you know application of IoT and AI ML uh, in a very significant manner in the field of Indian agriculture. Now, the scale of the application or the scale of the utilization of this technology in the real farm situation that might take some time. Obviously, you know that to make it a success uh, we need to again you know once it works then we have to work on the cost part of these technologies. So, otherwise as a technology it has potential in the field of natural resource management. So, this is a very simple uh, schematic diagram that how IoT can be applied in the field of agriculture and natural resource management. So, this is your field and uh, you can have various kind of sensor into this field and suppose that you are a owner and having only 2, 3 persons to look after the entire area then I think that IoT application would be a very effective one. So, they use also database server where the information from this sensor will go and ultimately from this database you can utilize those information and then process and then from there ultimate uh, you know the decisions goes to the end devices which ultimately will work and help you to grow a different kind of crops within a system and utilizing also less manpower. Mm -hmm.